Welcome, Campuseros. Uh, we really appreciate you having uh, uh, Vivo having us here. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about Evernote, a little bit about where we come from, how we think, what does it mean to us to be a 100-year company, and then also in terms of trends in Silicon Valley. Where are we going? Where's the world of work going? And where are we going technically with our product? Where are we innovating? So hopefully you'll find this interesting. So as you probably all know, Evernote started with this vision of remember everything. It's kind of like your second brain in a way. You take it with you. You can capture anything that's important to you in your life with any device that you have with you and make it accessible from all the devices you own. That's been the core promise of Evernote from the beginning. And that's what we're about. But where we're going with that, what, what is Evernote with a second brain? Our goal with this is we want to make you a little bit smarter. In fact, we want to make the whole world smarter one person at a time. So every feature of the product, every product that we build, every day we think about just making it a little bit better incrementally, day by day, so that you can be smarter, more efficient, and a little happier and less stressed in your life because of that. Let us know when we do that well, and when we fall short, we want to hear about that too. So we have this idea of a 100-year 100 100-year startup. And let me explain what we think about that. So it's great to be around for 100 years, obviously. Uh, existence for 100 years is good, but really what this is about is a framework for decisions. So every day when you're building a product, when you're building a company, you have to think about what's the right thing for my users, what's the right thing for the company, what should I be doing? And the frame of mind that we approach that with is always what's the decision that's right for 100 years from now? What's the decision that's right for our users? It forces our thinking process to be very, very long term. It's a core part about how we think about our life. And it's not just a 100-year company, but a 100-year startup. And what we mean by that is, when we started, we were all in a very, very small room. Uh, several people all around one table. Everybody knew what was going on. There was instant communication and bonding among the team, um, kind of like a, a, a collective thinking of the team that was very efficient. As we grow and become a large global company, we want to preserve that nimbleness of action, that tightness of culture, uh, and that effectiveness that we had as a very, very small startup. Uh, that's our quest. Fundamentally, the quest of Evernote is to be a 100-year startup. And we, the way we approach this from the perspective of everybody else we work with is we want our interests to be aligned with yours as users. We want our interests to be aligned with our investors. Uh, we never want to be at cross purposes. And we approach this in a very simple way. We have a direct business model. That means we only make money when we make you happy and you love Evernote so much that you want to buy product from us. That's the only way we make money. We don't sell your data. We don't serve ads from third parties to you. We don't attempt to monetize the service in any other way. So that idea of a simple direct business model is how our interests are aligned with yours as users and how we maintain your trust so that you put everything that's most important to you in your life in Evernote. That's fundamentally important to us. So your data is yours. The three principles of Evernote are your data is yours. It's always yours. Our job is Evernote. The second law is our job is to protect your data. The third law is you can always take your data with you anytime, and we'll make that very easy for you. Those are the principles by which we deliver on this idea of trust and the simple, mo simple direct model. We're very gratified to have over 80 million users around the world. We've been more than doubling every year for five years now. It's a fantastic rate of growth. And it's really thanks to you, our, user, our loyal users, because the way people find out about Evernote, the way they adopt it, is from other users. It's driven entirely by word of mouth. That's how we grow. So our job is to build a product that you love, 
And then your job to help us is to tell your friends and your coworkers about it so they use it as well. And that's what leads to this level of growth. In Brazil, in the last couple of years, we've grown from almost nothing to well over 2 million users. So we're quite proud of what's, what we've been able to achieve here. This is what we call our country club. So it gives you a view of how global we are as a corporation. There are 16 countries in the world where we have more than a million users on every continent. So we approach everything as a global problem. We think of ourselves as a global company. Our job is to build a globally great product that serves everybody in the world. And one of the ways we do this, we achieve that vision of being globally great, is we can't just do that from Silicon Valley. We need to be present around the world, but we have a very specific philosophy about where we're present and why. We want to be in the most important innovation centers in the world, the places that are driving innovation forward, because we want that thinking, that talent, that brain power to help drive Evernote forward. We're in these places to learn and to grow and to make Evernote better for everybody everywhere in the world. And in Sao Paulo in particular, we have a small presence here that we hope to grow. And we really appreciate the design sense and design culture and thinking that's present in Brazil. And we want to learn from that and we want to build it into the way Evernote thinks. And we want to get better by what we learn from you. We also want to contribute back to Sao Paulo as well. We work with many, many local developers to do that. So speaking of the design, Evernote is a product-centric company. Uh, most of the company revolves around product and engineering. It's core to our culture. But more particularly, we're a design-driven product-centric company. So what that means in practice is not a single line of code gets written idea of the problem we're trying to solve. What, what, how are we trying to make your life easier? How are we trying to make your, you smarter? What's the use case? How should that look? What's the flow? That's where we start. Then we build product. Uh, that's always the way we drive ourselves. We're proud that that design sense has been recognized by many parties, including recently by Apple at WWDC, where we won the design award for our Mac app, an app that's been around for five years but yet is still winning awards as one of the most innovative apps um, in the marketplace. Also, what's cool about this award from a personal perspective is I love Apple's design sense. If you touch the top of it, it actually glows. Uh, so it's kind of a cool award. Uh, we're, we're pretty proud of that. And that design sense is reflected in all of our products. And as you all know, we have great versions for every platform. We have native development on every type of platform. We don't do cross-platform development. The job of every team is to make the best version of Evernote, the best version of their product for that platform, not across platforms. So we do that for iOS, for Mac, for Android, for Windows, and also for Windows, uh, Windows Phone, BlackBerry, and other devices. And now I'd like to switch a little bit to talk about are thinking about the world of work and where that's going and how that's evolving. So Evernote serves knowledge workers in the world of work. It's, we solve a problem of information overload in modern life fundamentally. In the world of work, that translates to knowledge work. All of you are knowledge workers. And what we contend is that knowledge workers are what drives the economy. You guys, knowledge workers, makes innovation go forward. It's what makes companies progress. It's what makes new products and services come to the market. It's how the world gets to be better. Knowledge workers are fundamental to, to the productivity of the world economy. And you, knowledge workers, deserve a great experience at work. You shouldn't have a subpar experience because that's, that's what you need to get your jobs done. And that's why we did Evernote Business. And we approached this in a very, very unique way. We built it first for ourselves. 
and first with the idea that we wanted to preserve that culture of Evernote operating in a single room where everybody could see everybody and see what was going on. We wanted to build software that enabled us to continue to run as a company that way, even with an extensive global operation. And that's been our design goal. But Evernote business is fundamentally Evernote. It's the same client software, the same thing that you use every day in your personal life with Evernote now, with a few differences. There's personal and business notebooks, so that information that belongs to the business can be clearly owned by them. There's better collaboration with your coworkers, so you know who they are, what, they wor what they're working on, who in your company is the most expert on a given topic. All of that will just appear to you um, as you're using Evernote Business. And of course, for your IT management and staff, there's centralized administration and billing. What you'll see as a user is the Evernote client with a little bit of enhancement. You, you will see a section of your company that's showing you all the people and what they're working on, and it enables you to collaborate with them easily. But other than this type of feature, it's still the core Evernote client, and it starts with the idea of we want to make you more productive at work, and sometimes that involves you working with others and coworkers. And so that's what we built into that product. So we're proud of where that's come over the last year. We have more than 10,000 companies, five sales and support groups all around the world, um, so selling and supporting in 10 languages. Um, it's been a huge success for us. In the last week, we've done a number of user events with some of these business customers, telling others how they're using it. There's over 200 businesses in Brazil that are running their companies on Evernote Business today. So one more topic. I was asked also to speak about technology trends. Where are we going and where do we think Silicon Valley is going in terms of technology trends? And that's obviously a big topic, so I can't talk about everything. But I picked out I think what I think is one important So it's been a dream of computer scientists for decades to build artificial intelligence, a machine that thinks, if you will. We think that there's a that's a it's an interesting idea. It's led to a lot of interesting technology developments, but it's not really the right way to think about the problem. What you really want is augmented intelligence. You want computers to help make you smarter, to help you get your job done, not to be thinking by themselves. And that's really how you fulfill the promise of decades of research in artificial intelligence is you repurpose it and harness it to service you individually to make your life better and easier. This is a huge area of investment for us. We have a number of top people from top universities all around the world that have come to Evernote to work on this. It's a deep, deep technology investment. There are a few proof points that already have appeared in the product that give you just a small taste of what's to come in this area. So there's the idea of search, search completion or type ahead search. Now, this is deceptively similar to what you might see in a search engine, but very, very different. When you type a search in a search engine, it's a big data problem. The search engine is looking at all of the data in the internet and everybody else's searches, and it's using everybody's data all around Brazil to inform the search result that you're going to see. So that's a big data problem. Evernote approaches this as a small data problem. We have a search engine dedicated to each of you individually as an individual user. Your data is used to enhance your search experience, not somebody else's search experience. Uh, so it's a, it's a fundamentally different approach given our, our, our focus on privacy of your data, but a similar idea. Related notes is another such area. So as you're working, things that are related to what you're working just show up as related notes. And this works for both premium and business customers. Not only that, people also show up. So if this is a topic that you're working on and there's somebody in your company who's a real expert on that, their name's gonna appear down at the bottom as well saying, hey, you should talk to Carlos. 
He's the guy who knows about this topic. People find that to be very, very powerful. This is actually the first thing we did out of our uh, augmented intelligence team. A very simple but very powerful feature of automatically titling notes. We found it was kind of funny that a lot of people had dozens or even hundreds of notes whose title was Untitled Note. And we thought that was a bit unfriendly and not a very satisfying user experience. So now when you, you start up Evernote, you create a note, it'll, look on, it'll use your calendar, your location, and other information to try and guess a nice title for the note. And you can obviously change it if you want, but if you don't, at least it gives you something that's a little bit informative. Another example is content categorization. Here we're showing an example of recipes. So if you have recipes in your Evernote account, we'll know that they're recipes, we'll parse them as recipes, and if you use Evernote food, it'll appear in your cookbook as a recipe. You didn't have to do anything for any of that to happen. It just works automatically. But again, only using your data for your benefit. So your recipe is not used to benefit somebody else's search. Another area is something called anticipatory design. So Evernote, with all of its features, sometimes can be a little overwhelming for people. But you don't need to see every feature all at once. Not everything is relevant to you all the time. So the product should adapt. It should show you in the initial screen of the product what's going to be important to you, what, what might you be looking for. It should anticipate your needs. And that fits very well with the theme of augmented intelligence in general. We want the product to anticipate your needs, help complete your thoughts, not just be a repository. So that's all I have. I'm happy to answer questions and talk about other topics. But abrigado, uh, very, very happy to be here. Thank you to Vivo for their sponsorship. I hope uh, many of you are Vivo customers. You can go to their, to their website and access a free one-year subscription to Evernote Premium Vivo subscriber. Uh, thanks to their sponsorship, we appreciate that. Also, please follow us on your social channels. E. E. Oh, you have a question. So, hi, I'm Pedro. Um, I use Evernote every day. I've been using here on Campus Party to take notes on everything I saw. And I really love Evernote. Like a lot of other services that I use online, like SoundCloud, YouTube, it really changed my life. And um, I'm also an entrepreneur. Uh, I want to make a company with the same thinking as Evernote on the user and how to make the life of the user better. But my question is, uh, how can you grow with keeping the same thinking about the user in the same way of view without changing? How, how can I say that in a different way? How can you grow without losing your feeling about what you want for your user? For for example, like started with a small team and you grew up, you grew up, and how can you, how can you not lose focus? So there's many aspects to that, obviously, but I think the most important is a is a clarity of vision about where what do you want to achieve and where do you want to go, and very clear alignment among your stakeholders and especially between the company and its and its uh, customers or users. Your business model should align with their interests. Uh, that's that's why we've approached our business model the way we have and if you have third-party developers working on your platform the same thing you want to make sure that the way your business model works it doesn't create a conflict of interest that's over time that's what helps you maintain that uh, that startup uh, spirit that you have I, I, hey yeah I, I I'm sorry I just have a quick one. hey uh, uh, well Congratulations for the great product you guys have. I, I, I'm also a huge fan. 
In fact, I'm interested in, in uh, about the Evernote business, right? I'd like to know, I'm interested to know, where do you think, I mean, I mean, uh, how do you see Evernote business? Like a, a productivity app or more like a management system? How do you see, I mean, I mean, what's your path to Evernote well, business? Evernote business is really just Evernote but for use in your business. So it's not a different product. It's a way that enables you to use the Evernote you already love in a business context in a way that's appropriate for your business. So we don't think of it as a different thing, and it in fact isn't. It's the same client. Uh, and more than two-thirds of our users use Evernote at work already. They use it throughout their lives. It's, you know, it's their second brain that follows them everywhere at work, in their personal life, and those boundaries between work and personal life are increasingly blurring. Uh, the idea that there's a business and a personal life as totally separate things really makes less and less sense in the modern world, particularly when you're talking about knowledge workers. Hi. Uh, my name is, thank you for, for your speak. It was very interesting to understand how it works. My name is Fernanda, and I'm an anthropologist but I, I work uh, with business intelligence and I've been researching tourism for seven years and I've been noticing how, how increasingly people have uh, incorporated mobile experiences to their travel experiences. And now working as a researcher in the business intelligence area, I'm, I'm curious to understand how Evernote team incorporates uh, research activities and qualitative thinking or anthropological thinking to understand what the user really wants because it's something I, I would like to do in my professional life to kind of like bring things together and I think this is a good experience, it, it, mm. this is a good example. I would like to know more about it. Yeah, it, it's a challenging problem to, to understand user needs and to incorporate feedback. Um, you can't just do it the easy way. You can't just ask everybody what they want and then go down the list and give them everything because that gives you kind of a, a mishmash of a product that's a bit unusable. So you really have to start with a core purpose and an idea of what you want to achieve and a gut feeling, a sense of the product yourself and who it serves. And in our case, it helps that, that we are our own audience, so we're kind of building a product for ourselves. That gives us an anchor point. What we find with user research is users are really good at telling us when we screwed up, which we do occasionally do. Uh, when that happens, we find out about it fast, we fix it fast. So that kind of feedback you have to be right on top of and really, really responsive to. When you're asking for more subtle feedback, what we find is you really just have to show people things and say, hey, try this, tell me what you think. And we do that with panel-based research um, to many, many thousands of individual people where we show them things and we get direct feedback based on them experiencing our idea of how something looks. And when it feels right, we'll put it into a broader beta program and get, it, get uh, feedback from the tens of thousands of people who've signed up for our beta program. Um, so we think that's, uh, that's a pretty effective approach. The one thing that we, we are a little bit careful of is the use of data. So we can never use the information in your account to inform our design because that's yours. So we can never look at it. So when it's a question of data related issues and what we should do, we really have to do that through surveys. We have to ask people questions and find out things through, uh, through surveys and voluntarily, uh, voluntarily responding. And th those are the kind of the major techniques that we're using. Good, well, we have some giveaways. Uh, oh, do you have one more question? No, giveaways, okay. So, we have our own unique way of doing giveaways. So we play, uh, we, we do rock, paper, scissors with the crowd, so you know the game. Rock, paper, scissors. So everybody stands up, we do that all at once, and then you have to beat me, or you sit down, so if I do rock, that means if you have scissors or rock, you have to sit down. But if you have paper and you beat me, then you get to stand up. Gente, vamos começar o sorteio aqui da Evernote agora, mas não vai ser um sorteio comum. Então todo mundo de pé, bem animado, e a gente vai brincar de pedra, papel, tesoura. Vamos?
Okay, so we're ready. I'm ready. Uno, dos, tres. So rocks, stand up. Everybody else, sit down. Então, todo mundo que não for tesoura. Oh, rock, only rock stands. Pedra, Everybody senta. else sit down. Who's, how many rocks do we have? As pedras com de pé. We have one, two, three, four. I think that's good. So. Hey. Okay. And we'll do this one more time for some Evernote premium cards as well. Mais uma vez. We have, we, do we have one in the... No, no. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So one more time. You guys ready this time? Practice. So got to stand up. Uno, dos, tres. Okay, so scissors stand up. Vou ficar fora que eu já tenho. Tesouras de pé. Você de novo? <laughs> Sortuda. Okay, so now we have too many, so we got to do it one more time. With the, Muita just gente, the people who are standing up, though. Just the people who are already standing up, do it with the scissors. Só quem já tá de pé. Uno, dos, tres. So paper, paper. Oh, Papel. Three, two. Three. Okay. So oh, four. So four winners. Do we have four cards, Quatro Gretel? Quatro papéis. All right. Valeu, pessoal. Obrigada pela presença. Thank you all so much for coming.